Hello everyone, hope you're having a wonderful day and today guys we're going to be going over another build for Wukong except this time I'm going to be showing you guys a really fun and strong fire build you can put together in Black Myth Wukong. So we're going to be utilizing the fire stats effect, one really cool smash staff and also one of arguably the strongest spirit in the game. I know that's a bold claim, but once you see this bad boy in action, you will not be disappointed. So if you want to roast and toast your enemies more than your nan's chicken on a Sunday, then this build might be the build for you. So what makes this build so good? For starters, we have some amazing damage. To be fair, it's not the best damage we could have, but we are taking advantage of the fire status effect, which does bring our staff damage on par with a lot of the other staff, even the new game plus ones. So with our spirits, our transformation, the fire status effect, and also our staff laying down some big charge heavies to knock the enemies into the shadow realm, you can seriously make light work of pretty much all content inside of Wukong. So the second point I'd like to go over is we're actually pretty defensive, not as defensive as the pillar stance build I showed off. I mean, standing on top of your pillar away from all the enemies is, you know, kind of OP. But even though we're not using pillar stance, this build is actually pretty defensive and it all comes down to the fact that our staff that we are taking has defense on it. I think it comes with like 40 defense, which is one of the only styles that actually comes with defense. Now, not sure how important defense is inside the game, but it's got to do something right, guys, it, right? I'm sure having 40 extra defense is got to be beneficial in some way. And of course, the most important thing, this build is bloody fun to play. This is the build I used to beat the game and I had an absolute blast, an absolute fiery time, if you will finish the game with this particular setup. All right, enough of the intro bullshit. Let's actually jump on over to what we are taking with this particular setup. So just like the other build video I did, I'm gonna go over the weapons, the armor, the curios, uh, spirit, all that kind of stuff. And then I'll go over the skills and the relics at the end. Uh, everything will be timestamped so you guys can just, you know, jump through to whatever you want to see. So you don't have to listen to me carry on for like 20 minutes. All right, so starting with the weapon and the weapon we are using is the Staff of Blazing Karma. I'm sure you guys could probably tell that by the clips on the screen. It's the only, you know, staff in the game that actually applies fire on the ground or applies that fire burning effect. Really, really strong and fun staff to use. It does have 100 attack. It does come with that 40 defense. Again, I'm not sure how useful or beneficial defense is inside of Black Myth Wukong. But like I said, it's got to do something, right? So I think 40 defense is a significant amount and the 10 burn resistance. There's some enemies in the game this is going to be very useful against, but otherwise it's not really that important. Now the way this staff works is it has a unique effect. Charge heavy attacks in the smash stand uh, that cost over three focus points will inflict a bursting lava effect on the ground. This is really, really cool. This is our main bread and butter of the build. We just want to charge our focus points up to three and unload them on the enemies so we can do big damage and also leave that little lava puddle or you know fire puddle on the ground. So then they can get burned by it, which will apply the burning status effect. And that burning a status effect does tick away for a decent chunk of damage. I'm not sure if it gets boosted by other bonuses, but I think it's just base damage is like about 60, 70, 80 damage. But that fire status effects definitely roast and toast that enemy very quickly. It does do a decent amount of damage. And that's pretty much all you want to do with this stuff. You want to do some light attacks to build up focus points. So then you can unload the three or more focus points to get that lava puddle on the ground or the way that I particularly use this stuff all the time is you just want to run around, uh, charge up your staff manually, get to those three focus points, just leg it at the enemy and then drop the big charge heavy and the fire damage on them. Hopefully you burn them and you, it's just going to eat away at their health very quickly. Now moving on over to the armor and I'm not fully set in stone here. I'm worse than a woman trying to decide what she wants to wear on a night out. I just can't figure out what works the best because there are a few different things that you can set up. Uh, but for what I am using right now, I do have the Gold Mask of Fury. It is upgraded. I think I've only upgraded this once because it was already legendary before. This mask has a unique effect. Upon successful hits from spirit skills, grants massive focus upon reverting. So this is just handy. So when we use our spirit, we get extra focus when we revert back to our monkey form, which is just gonna help us charge up our focus points quicker to get to those three or more focus points to unleash that charge heavy and get that fire puddle on the ground. Moving on over to the chest piece, I do have the golded embroidered shirt. I think I have upgraded this once as well. This is just to go with the mask so we can get the two 
XP set bonus, which is for a short duration after performing a spirit skill or using a vessel, uh, which is those, you know, the fireproof mantle, the golden needle, the fan. Uh, it is going to considerably increase your attack. So this is just good because we want to use our spirit because it is insanely strong and I'll show you guys that in a second. This is great. So when we use our spirit, not only do we get extra focus points when we revert, uh, we're now going to increase or considerably increase our damage and this is a pretty big increase you definitely notice this increase uh and it's going to make you want to try and get your spirit or use your spirits more often so you can get that attack bonus for the van braces i do have the long soaring braces uh these are the braces you get from chapter six at the very last chapter these are really good because it does come with critical hit chance on here four percent which is a very big increase and it also has very decent defense so you know good overall van braces to have and then moving on over to legs we are using the ebon gold guardians Gu guardians i think that's how you say that word uh apologies if i am butchering the pronunciation the main reason we're using these particular legs is because of the unique effect after a moment in cloud step considerably increases unveiling stripe damage another armor set option that you could use is the ebon gold silk robe uh when you have a th when you have the three piece set bonus while you're in cloud step shrouding black wind will attack the enemies nearby the destined one and the decoy continuously there are multiple ways you can try and get cloud step back quicker by doing that you're able to go into cloud step more often you're able to get all this like free damage out by these black winds which is pretty cool not as strong as the main setup i showed you but it is something else you can play around with if maybe you're bored using this and you just want to try something else didn't mention it but same goes for the weapon like pretty much you can use every weapon it's just nice that this weapon in particular when you spend the three focus points you put the lava puddle on the ground uh but feel free to really use whatever weapon you want i just wanted to go for that more fire themed kind of build but you know there are still plenty of other stronger stars in the game but this staff of blazing karma also does not fuck around so we're just going to quickly whiz through the curios right now aka the amulet so first up we have the white seashell waist chain this is going to slightly increase our attack i do have the amber prayer beads this is going to moderately increase the speed build up of focus points so this is going to be very handy uh, to charge up our three focus points even quicker and then last but not least we have the celestial birthstone fragment now this curios this amulet it strikes fear into the heart of every enemy in this bloody universe because this amulet allows us to ignore the enemy's four bane resistances baby so we can just apply fire poison lightning frost just that little bit easier and also i think it's going to let them take even more damage from those status effects i.e fire and poison so very strong amulet does suck you have to wait to chapter six to get this absolute ripper of an amulet but boy once you get it it is pretty hard to take this off especially if you want to dabble in status effects all right so moving on over to the spirit and this spirit needs no introduction ladies and gentlemen the Flink Vanguard is arguably one of the strongest spirits in the game, and I'm about to tell you why. So, the reason this spirit is so strong is it can hit up to six friggin' times. Six! And these hits aren't tickles, they're bloody hits. So when you use a spirit, you just go smash, 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 oh, boom. Uh, so each one of those arm smashes do about 400 to 500 damage. You do four of them, so there's 2k straight off the rip. And then your finishing move that the spirit does, slams down on the ground, shoots like three puddles of lava out. Um, if you hit the initial enemy, they'll go flying into one of the lava puddles, which hits them again. So you can get up to like six hits. I have seen six hit. Six different hits on the enemies and when you do do that initial finisher uh it does about 1500 2k damage and then you're going to burn the enemy this will always burn the enemy if you hit the enemy with most of the spirit they will be burned no questions asked so you're going to be doing massive amounts of damage and you're always going to burn the enemy if they can be burned which is crazy which is absolutely absurd this spirit does not muck around and it puts a lot of enemies six feet under it does have a high chi cost but that does not matter our gourd is going to fix that problem for us its equipped effect is also very handy especially with this build it moderately increases our scorch damage and burn resistance burn resistant is nice to have i don't think we really need it but that increase to scorch damage is very nice this is going to apply to our weapon when we do unload those three focus points and also our transformation for the other spirits you can use the bull governor is pretty good uh the flint vanguard is just light years above everything and damage the bull governor is still pretty good if you want to use something else 
The turtle treasure is also not bad as well because his equip effect does considerably increase damage dealt by heavy attacks that cost three or four focus points. Uh, just considerably increasing your damage with those charge heavies is is pretty ridiculous. And then for the vessel, we are using the Weaver's Needle, mainly because it increases our critical hit chance and critical hit damage, which is huge. Moving on over to our Gourd, we are using the Immortal Blessed Gourd. Our health recovery from this Gourd is going to be halved, but we're going to increase our attack. This does increase our attack by a decent chunk, I think 30 attack. Let's find out. Let, let's find out together. We got 117 attack. Let's drink it. We now have... 137 so 20 attack it gives us 20 attack so the gore does give you a tw 20 extra attack which is pretty big in a game like this i have got the sunset of nine skies this is going to uh give us 35 percent of a maximum health back on each sip but it also grants us a considerable amount of chi which is fantastic because our flint vanguard has a very high chi cost when we're taking an absolute ass beating we can down our gourd and we're going to be getting chi back to then use that spirit which just absolutely nukes everything we do have have the L'Oreal Bud which is going to give us damage reduction this gives 10% damage reduction we have Breath of Fire which is going to increase our attack for the next unveiling strike and cloud step and then we have B Mountain Stone which is where we have a chance to use our gourd it does not consume a sip this is really really good and it's going to help you stay in the fight for much much longer all right moving on over to the skills now the main meat and potatoes of the video so first up for the stamina section i have same as the pillar stance i've worked all the way down the vengeful mirage vengeful mirage is just really good that when you're just doing perfect dodges you're going to leave a little illusion a little decoy there that will explode and do a little bit of damage to the enemy. We've gone down martial arts to punishing downpour. This is so our light attack finisher is going to do more damage. The light attacks are the main bread and butter of this game. So getting that finisher to do more damage is just fantastic. So for survival, we are maxing out health. I've got three points in the stam. I've got uh, max out the critical hit chant. I've got four points into rough skin. I've maxed out Wraithful Might to further increase our critical hit damage. And then the best one, Surging Momentum. The, I've maxed this out. This is going to increase your overall attack power. Moving on over to Star Stances. We are fully maxing out all of Smash Stance. The main thing to take away from Smash Stance is do not forget about um, your Skyfall Strike and also Resolute Strike. Uh, Resolute Strike is basically an inbuilt parry into Smash Stance. It's very, very fun to get off. Very satisfying to do. Uh, I absolutely love Resolute Strike. And then you can follow that up with Skyfall Strike. So once you do do a Resolute Strike, you get that parry off. You can follow up with another heavy and you will dump Skyfall Strike. Because we do have Endeavor, you can actually use Skyfall Strike without having any focus points. Doesn't do that much damage. I'd highly recommend trying to use Skyfall Strike while you have focus points because you're just going to do that much, dam much more damage. And then Vantage Point ties the Resolute Strike and the Skyfall Strike all together. This is the Chef Kiss. That when you do see through an enemy, you're just going to do more damage. So you get even more reward for playing uh, like an absolute beast. Moving on over to Mysticism. Uh, we are taking Immobilize. So I've just put points in the Immobilize down to Spirit Shards. This is so when we crash enemies out of Immobilize, we're going to get a little bit of mana back. So we can, you know, keep casting other spells and also keep using Immobilize. Now moving on over to Alteration. And the thing we're taking in Alteration is Cloud Step this time. Before I had Rock Solid. I like getting rock solid in Wukong. But now, for this particular build, we're using Cloud Step. And Cloud Step is absolutely bananas. No pun intended. And the main reason for that is because of Concealed Observation, Thunder Strike, and Absolute Strike. So Concealed Observation, this is going to give you critical hit chance. The longer you are in Cloud Step, this can stack up to 10 times. So I'm assuming you get 10% extra critical hit chance which is huge that is that is amazing thunder strike lets you use unveiling strike with a charge heavy which is fantastic since our build is based around unloading those charge heavies to get the lava pools out we can now do that in uh cloud step which is great because that our charge heavies is going to get 10 percent extra critical strike chance if we're in cloud step for the maximum amount of time and charging up those three focus points I'm pretty sure that is the maximum amount of time you can be in Cloud Step. So it works out very well. It's really good synergy. And then, of course, Absolute Strike is just going to further increase the damage you do with Unveiling Strike. Got nothing in Strand. I, we are using Pluck of Many, though. Pluck of Many is just, you know, it's just absolutely ridiculous. Absolutely OP. 
Uh, there's no reason to not take Plucker Manny if you want to try and do as much DPS as possible. Now moving on over to the transformation section, I have maxed out Rage Burst. This is going to slightly increase Scorch damage for the Ashen Slumber transformation. You could use the Red Tides transformation if you wanted to. They're both pretty much on par with how much damage they can do, how easily they can apply the burn status effect. I just kind of like the Ashen Slumber because it, you, you explode when you de-transform. That's really cool. It's just nice to also add additional damage on while you are de-transforming. And he also breathes fire out, which pretty much burns the enemy almost instantly. And it does pretty decent damage too. It sucks that you do get stuck in one spot while you have to breathe out the fire. So for that matter, Red Tides probably pulls a little bit ahead. But I, you know, I just like that explosion at the end. That's the main reason why I'm using Ash and Slumber. I think personally, probably Red Tides is better overall. Uh, but do not sleep on Ash and Slumber. He's a decent transformation. It is pretty fun to use and just breathe fire on the enemy. And self-destructing, self-detonating uh, your transformation away is also really cool too. I do have the one point in Ferocious Form. I forgot about that. That's just going to further increase our attack with any transformation. All right, last but not least, moving on over to the Relics. Now for the first Relic, the Craving Eyes, I do have Eagle Eye and also Keen Insight. The one I went with first is Keen Insight. I got Eagle Eye after, so just ignore that if you're on your first playthrough. Keen Insight is the one I went with first. Uh, yeah, but bit of a spoiler alert if you guys do not know, as you go through New Game Plus, uh, you do unlock... Uh, extra relic slot so when you go through the game three times you're gonna have everything unlocked anyway uh, which is actually really really cool for the second relic fuming ears i've gone with whistling winds temple increases attack after a perfect dodge this is just very handy for the hubris nose relic i've got lingering aroma which this is going to give us a moderate damage bonus for a short time after casting a spell which is great for when we're using you know mobilize and uh, cloud step which we're going to be using quite often with this build so it's great that we're going to be getting damage bonus from that for envious tongue i have got tongue of a connoisseur each equipped soaked slightly increased of the health recovery of the drink this is great so we're just going to get more health recovery per each sip of the gourd and then for the grief body i've just got nimble body massively reduces the stamina cost of all charge heavy attack this i don't think stamina is too much of an issue in this game this is just great so when we are charging up a heavies which we're doing constantly uh that we're not just going to be burning through our stamina too quickly and that is basically it for the build video guys hopefully this build video did help you guys out if there's anything i missed or if there's anything that you think will make this particular build better let me know down in the comment section below i always try and at least read your guys comments i always try and get around to them i had a lot of fun putting this build together i highly recommend you guys try this out if you have not and even if you don't want to try the build out you have to try flint vanguard spirit out that spirit just absolutely bulldozes its way through pretty much every single bit of content in this game it is just so strong i can't believe they thought that was a good idea appreciate all the love and support as always guys and until next time stay safe peace out